doing a quick review of what we've learned about <coughs> um, this MAMRA of the cheat meat and wine. So first of all, here's our MAMRA. That's the rule. He has to be eating eating cheap meat and drinking cheap wine. So this now uh, we said we saw in our mission it has to be meat and wine. The mission itself also uh, qualified that in with regard to amounts of meat and wine. Now we're qualifying that in terms of types of meat and wine. Uh, a number of you noticed that that doesn't seem to fit with the image of the uh, expensive wine. And in fact, some there is some question as to whether that word Italian is really supposed to be part of the Mishnah, or if that's actually a mistake. But um, for now, let's focus on this. We have a, a, a rule, it has to be cheap, and we have a proof text. Dichtiv, like Shinemar, we have this, as it says in the Torah, and here's our source. Right? It looks like <coughs> Zol is based on the fact that the verse used the word Zolel. But this is different than other proofs. And the reason it's different is that regardless of context, we may have seen other places where Acharei Rabim Lahatot, the rabbis read it differently than the sort of original context meaning, but they read those words with what those words mean. Here, we know that this is not what Zolel means. It's obvious that it's a word play. So Rashi. I'm going to take the second Rashi first. Zolel is Lashon Zol. Right? He's explaining, it's explaining what does it, Zolel, how does Zolel support the claim of Zol? It's just a language thing. Right? But then he qualifies it. It's just an Asmachta. Being an Asmachta means it's not the real source for the rule. It is either, and if you look, if you read carefully, there's a lengthy explanation of asmachta in Frank. It's worth reading. But it is either a verbal cue to help us remember the rule, or a confirmation of the law, but not the actual reason or source for it. Right. Why does Rashi hedge like this? Rashi doesn't like the idea that this phrase could be the basis for the law. Well, that's wrong. So two answers. We already learn uh, other things from the word Zolel. So one problem could be we've used Zolel for other stuff. And we'll see other cases where the Gemara, sa the Gemara itself says we already learned rule A from this word. We can't learn other things from the same word. But the bigger problem, I think, is that Rashi knows, and Rashi knows that we know, that it's not about context or out of context. It's they're two different words that have two totally different meanings. And that somehow crosses a line of acceptable interpretation. This should ring bells. Right? We've been talking about. You know, once there's this freedom to interpret, are there lines of what's acceptable? This seems to be one. So, Rashi says, no. here's the real reason. Now, here, um, what's difficult is putting together what the sentence means. The first thing you need to know is Rashi picks up mid-sentence. Sometimes Rashi will start his own sentence, and sometimes, basically, he's, you have to read him as continuing uh, from the words of the Gemara. So here, yain bezol, right? Unless he got cheap wine, comma, but expensive wine, etc. Now, the rest of this, lo shchiche le maot bignov kulehai. Identify what's what. Lo shchiche, 
is not accessible lay to him right? is not accessible to him ma'ot or are not accessible to him perhaps ma'ot money lignov lignov is in is the is a shem poal a shem poal is always a secondary verb right um ani rotze la'asot ani um tsarikh la'asot it's always a secondary verb kulehai so much right kulehai could be an adverb or it could be an adjective okay but let's put it together as the the subject has to be attached to the verb um, and the secondary verb follows on the on the main verb okay uh, and uh, and then we'll see where to put the indirect object look adjective plus subject so much money is not accessible to him we are now getting a coherent idea so much money is not accessible to him to steal so what's the point oh the point is he won't be able to steal enough money to buy lots of expensive wine and so he wouldn't develop the habit. All of this is a way of explaining why the wine that he's drinking should be cheap wine, because cheap wine is stuff that he can steal, that he can he can somehow get the money to keep buying regularly. And regularly is what's required to develop a habit, an addiction, which is essentially how Rashi wants to frame the whole problem of the Ben Sura an addict. Who, whose addiction will lead him into increasingly, increasingly dangerous behaviors.